Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick2. Today I'm going to be showing you guys all of the best and most efficient ways to farm for gear so that you can start making your builds as soon as humanly possible. I've had a lot of people ask me about what the best ways to farm were, so I figured I would try to figure that out myself and then make a video letting you guys know. So if this video does help you out, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe for videos similar to this one. If you guys ever have any questions or you would like to just watch me making builds, uh, farming, anything like that, or you'd like to farm with me, please make sure to check me out over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Nick2. I would love to see more of you guys around. And if anybody needs help farming or would like me to help, you know, farm for them and stuff like that, make builds for them, etc., please feel free to email me at nick2biz at gmail.com and I would be more than happy to help you out. All right, so getting into it, um, we're going to talk about a couple things first and then I'll go into the methods of farming. But there's two things that are incredibly important when farming. One of them, first off, is targeted loot. This is a new system that was brought a little while back, and it pretty much changes the entire ecosystem of looting, and it's incredibly important to focus on this because what targeted loot does is, for example, in the top left DZ, you can see it has an icon here. You just open your map and you show targeted loot. Um, so I open my map, I show targeted loot, and then on the top left DZ, you can see that it increased loot allocation for the Alp Summit gear. If I were to go into this dark zone and then I were to farm, pretty much almost half of the gear that would drop would be Alps gear. This is incredibly strong and it is, it, you know, throughout the entire map, there's pretty much anything that I could go and get. So, for example, if I really want a Petrov, I could go to this area and then I could farm it over and over again and pray that I get the piece that I want. This is really good because half of the pieces that are dropping are going to be what it is that you would want. This is... However, a little bit annoying if you would like to farm a certain area and it doesn't drop something that you want. So if I wanted to farm the Dark Zone, but you know Alps is dropping, that would kind of suck for me because I don't really care about Alps gear. But it's really good on the flip side. Uh, loot allocation or the, loot, the targeted loot, it resets every 24 hours. For me, it resets at 11 p.m. PST. So you can just convert that to whatever your time zone is. But yeah, uh, targeted loot is incredibly important and I will be referencing it uh, throughout the video. It is more often than not more efficient to just farm areas that are targeted loot specific to what you would like to get rather than just farming one area just for sheer drop per hour and praying that you get what you want out of the loot pool. It's just much more efficient to farm a targeted loot area. Another thing that's very important to mention is the crafting station. A lot of people seem to overlook this and I don't necessarily blame them but the crafting station you can craft pretty much whatever gear you want. So for example I really wanted a providence chest. I ended up crafting like a probably like 70 of them or something like that and i ended up getting a pretty good one right here and i also have the one that i'm uh, that i currently have equipped both of these i ended up crafting so crafting is an incredibly good way to try to specifically get exactly what it is that you want however it is very costly and more often than not the rolls that you're going to get are going to be very low in terms of like stat allocation they're going to have very low percentages like if i make one right here the chances are that like it's going to look like this most of the time but if you get lucky like me you'll end up getting something that's really good and there's nothing really else that you want to be spending your materials on so i would definitely highly suggest getting all of the blueprints and then you know starting to craft some of the specific gear or the specific upgrades that you want so in terms of actually how you get uh, blueprints you just do control points on level three i'll go more into that later but initially I would recommend getting all of the blueprints that you'd want your gear to make and then I would go and farm other things so that you're getting materials while you're farming and then you can craft gear in between doing different farms so that you can try to get the specific pieces that you want. Okay, so in terms of just raw loot per hour and what the fastest and most efficient way to farm currently is within the game, it is by far and away the Dark Zone. The Dark Zone, the NPCs don't really have all that much health so they kind of fall over pretty quickly. Um, on top of that, the Dark Zone drops heroic quality loot, which means that a lot of the time the loot that you're getting is going to be very high quality. And on top of that, you get a ton of XP and the landmarks really don't take that long to clear. You can probably get like three to four pieces of loot per landmark, depending upon the difficulty of the landmark. And it will be cleared within about two minutes, probably. Uh, I would not recommend going in the Dark Zone if there's not at least two of you. Uh, doing it solo can be a little bit challenging, but if you feel confident and there's a target loot that you want there, you can go in there, you can deal with that. It might be a little bit difficult, but it's probably worth it if there's target loot that you want. Otherwise, I highly recommend people to just get a group and go in there. I know a lot of people don't really want to farm the Dark Zone, and that's perfectly fine if you're worried about people going rogue or you just don't want to deal with any PvP nonsense. That is 100% uh, acceptable. I would just highly recommend going in there if there's target loot that you want because you'll probably end up getting what you want pretty quickly and there's no other faster way to farm. But yeah, Dark Zone, if you're just trying to farm raw loot per hour, 
It's really good for XP to get shade ranked. It's really good for just loot, and you get a ton of materials per landmark clear as well. The dark zone overall is definitely the best place to farm. Second to that, there are a lot of things that you can do within the open world. Um, so for example, I figured this out yesterday uh, on stream. I had a lot of people help me out with this. Uh, but let's say that I wanted to farm this AR here or from a targeted area, right? So I'd probably just go over there and I would do a lot of the activities. Doing the activities is going to get you a lot of gear. So if I were to do this activity, I'd get a couple pieces of gear as well as doing all these. But then after that, you kind of run out of things to do. Uh, you can do bounties, but as you can see, there's only one bounty here. Or I guess one bounty and then there's a way to open that one. Whatever. There's not really a lot of ways that I can repeatedly do stuff over here. By the way, in terms of like what difficulty you want to play on the map, um, I should have mentioned this earlier, my apologies, uh, but you want to open up your global settings in your map and then you can change the difficulty and depending upon what the difficulty is, um, you'll get different quality loot. So when I play solo, I play on challenging. I don't know if, how much harder heroic would be. I feel like it would be a little bit too much because I already take a lot of damage as it is. But if you're playing in a group that has pretty good team comp, you can play heroic and get a lot more loot and higher quality, but the difference isn't massive between that and challenging. Uh, hard is not going to get you very good stuff, and I would pretty much never play a normal. I'd either play hard, challenging, or heroic, depending upon you know, how comfortable you are, but my overall recommendation is challenging. Anyway, so assuming that you're you know set to challenging, by the way, if you're, if you're set to challenging, that will make all the control points on your map automatically level 3, and level 3 control points will give you a crafting blueprint so that you can go and craft the pieces of gear that you want. But anyways, moving back to this example. So I'd pretty much just do the activities on the map here and then I'd be done, right? Well, one thing that you can do that I tested out on stream is that let's say that this uh, control point is red right here. I would just go to the control point and normally you'd think, okay, you just clear it and then you'd be done with it. But what you can actually do is you can go in there, you can kill a lot of the NPCs and then a first boss will spawn. You kill the first boss and he'll drop the loot and then you pretty much just die and then you'll come back and then if you come back, what will happen is that you'll just kill a few more NPCs and then the boss will respawn again. I don't know if, you know, if, if you're worried about this being like an exploit or something, I 100% understand. I really don't think that this is an exploit because the loot per hour isn't like insane or anything. You're not getting a ton of gear. And it's, you know, I don't know. I mean, it seems kind of intended that the boss respawns and you have to clear a lot of NPCs regardless. So it's not like an insanely lucrative farm. It's just a good way to specifically farm the target loot that you want especially when the target loot is in areas that you can't just reliably, repeatedly do the content. So I'll leave some gameplay of me doing that towards the end of the video. Um, another example would be that, let's say that the control point is green. So yesterday I was doing a control point down here, but initially it was green. So what I would recommend doing is if there's a control point that you want to farm, but it's green, I would recommend joining a friend of yours and then hoping that on their map it's red and then they would leave the game and then you'd just be able to do it yourself. Otherwise, doing pretty much any of the activities on the map is going to get you a decent amount of loot. Doing missions doesn't really get you all that much gear. Um, they usually are pretty time consuming and they don't give you a ton of loot. I would just highly recommend doing the things throughout the map. And then there are some like underground farms that you can do for materials if you'd rather just craft a whole bunch of stuff. I'll leave a link to a video from Solid FPS that goes over a route from that. Uh, but other than that, I would just do the um, I do the activities on a map and then I would just do the control point farm and that's probably going to be your best bet. Of course, if you're trying to farm for like a specific named item, an exotic, or something like that, the targeted loot or and slash or farming specific missions is going to be your best bet. I'll leave a link to um, a video that I made talking about the best exotics and how that you can get them, as well as a video about all the named items. That's pretty much the same thing there. But yeah, I mean, the loot is pretty straightforward. It's either just farm the dark zone or really just do control points and the activities within that area. The control point farm is very efficient while farming specific missions isn't all that efficient. Like if I wanted a pistol, farming air and space museum, I'd probably end up getting like three to four pistols and that might take me like 15 minutes to clear it. So honestly, really not all that worth it in my opinion, but it really depends on what you're you know, looking for and the targeted loot that you're trying to get and whatever like mission you know, that you're doing. Like certain missions are significantly faster than others. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped. If it did, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe for videos similar to this one. And I'll show you guys some gameplay of me doing the control point. I had to mute the audio because I pulled this from stream and um, I was listening to music in the background and YouTube would just instantly copyright my video if I were to play that, um, you know, with the music in the background. All right, thanks. And I hope this helped. I'll see you guys later. Peace.